We're talking with Rose Stewart. She survived a vicious attack by a serial killer, and she just told us our, her story. Uh, but we didn't get the finale of it. Rose, uh, what did uh, your attacker get for a term? For me, he got 56 years, and he's now on death row for the murders. He's got for the other murders. <laughs> Our next guest is one of the only survivors of the notorious Night Stalker killing spree in which Richard Ramirez brutally murdered 13 people in their beds in Southern California. Jenny Peterson was nearly one of them. Somehow, she survived. You're in your bedroom, all of a sudden there's a guy, and it's the Night Stalker. At that time, we were unaware that there was someone out there on a killing spree. Uh, no, no. You and your husband? My husband and myself. Uh, there had been no formal notification that uh, someone was out there killing at random. And what, what did he do to you? He entered the bedroom. We argued briefly. He leaned over and shot me through the face. When I fell back onto the bed, my husband sat up. He then shot my husband in the side of the head. We both fell back on the bed, and we had a bit of a conversation between each other. We thought perhaps it was someone playing a sick joke. We couldn't believe the magnitude of what was happening to us. Then we became aware that he was standing there laughing. Later on in testimony, he would uh, tell people from his jail cell that he liked to watch people wiggle like little worms uh, before they expired after he had shot them. I was very fortunate in that my husband found the strength and the courage to jump up and chase him out of the house. Meanwhile, still dodging two additional bullets. Even though he had been shot in the head, you yes. were shot in the face. Yes. You pass out? No, neither, uh, neither one of us at any time lost consciousness. Later on, you helped, I assume, in, in, the, uh, in the arrest of Richard Ramirez. He was not arrested for three more weeks. He was still on the loose. Uh, we did uh, go to a lineup several days after his capture, which was on September 1st. And then we uh, were part of the process. Of no the problem IDing him, huh? For myself, no. There was none whatsoever. I will never, ever forget that face. I talked to Richard Ramirez a few months ago, believe it or not, uh, about another show. Uh, and it was an exclusive interview we did in August from Death Row in California. And everyone should see what this guy is like and how he treats humanity and the human condition. I think most humans have in them the capacity to, co to commit murder. Uh, it is no, not because... No, we don't, Richard. Uh, they, they choose not to, not because they are morally superior, as they so commonly claim, but because they are imprisoned in a web of responsibilities, commitments, no, beliefs, and sentiments. Richard, Richard. And that would render murder an absurd gamble or ridiculous well, self-destruction. What do you think of somebody like that? He's the Richard Ramirez who you testified against? I feel nothing but scorn, disgust, and pity for him. Um, I, I don't believe... know if I would even feel pity for him. I do. For someone to be that sick, to be that evil, um, he was right in that we all have choices. He chose his path. He chose the death penalty every time he killed someone. I didn't make that choice for him through my testimony. Neither did anyone else. Just as Rose and myself and my husband Chris, we have chosen to be survivors, as thousands of other people out there have. He chose the path that he has taken. We have lots of questions for you, but as we leave, just answer me this. Shot in the face. It's amazing that there was not more damage done. The damage that is done is not always apparent to everyone. There, both my husband and I have a great deal of neurological problems. Um, you don't notice it. I notice that I lisp. I have vision problems. Mm -hmm. My husband has tinnitus. Uh, the left side of his body is damaged, my right side. But we say that together we make a whole person, just as we always have oh, through our marriage. We'll be back after this. to address this question to the both of you. I wanted to know how he broke into your home and how safe do you feel now and how can you protect yourself and your family? What about yeah. that, Jenny? Um, he apparently walked in through uh, an open door, 
because I didn't think this would ever happen to me like most women. And I'm now armed and dangerous. And uh, <laughs> no one's going to do that to me again. Any nightmares? Yes, but not always about him. They can take the form of any type, any type of trouble that your imagination can come up with. How did your families deal with what you went through, both of you? I think that when uh, you're attacked this way, it, the whole family is attacked because it just, it, it blows everyone away. And uh, it's just so close to home and death is so near. It's very difficult, but I think our family is much closer now as a result of this. Yeah. Yep. Okay, what went through your mind? Like, how did you calm yourself down to rational thought so you could um, escape from him? Especially when you went in and out of consciousness. Exactly. Uh, well, early on, I just realized that if I, I was panicking and hyperventilating and shaking violently, and I realized that if I didn't pull myself together and calm down and deal with the situation, that I didn't have a chance Jenny, in the world. Jenny, what was going through your mind? While the attack was occurring, I knew that I had to distance myself. Um, it sounds strange, but it was as if one part of me was in the attack and another part was standing back saying, look at his shoes, look at his pants, look huh. at his face, commit it to memory. Because I knew that if I didn't do that, that my family, I had a small child down the hallway, that none of us had a chance. So both of you, when you're walking down the street, is it hard to trust people again? Is it hard? I mean... Jenny? No, because if I allow him to victimize me. It's very much what Rose says. We are survivors. We, if we allow him to victimize us, then we are as much in the prison as he is. And I refuse to be that. Who is this, Jenny? That's my hero. That's my husband, Chris. Yeah. I want to thank you both for joining us. Uh, not only Chris and Jenny, but thank you so much, Rose. Uh, the kind of stories are so compelling, and your strength and courage have made it inspirational, I think, for all of us. I thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time. On Monday, Motherhood Without a Man will meet women who are taking their cues from TV's Murphy Brown, and they're having a baby without a husband. <laughs>